Has Will Ferrell struck Christmas silver and gold again with his new film Spirited? Or is this thing a stocking full of coal that absolutely no one asked for? Let's find out. I don't think I've actually been to a mystery movie before up until last night. You buy a ticket, you don't know what the film is, it's something that hasn't released yet in theaters, or in this case, on Apple Plus. And you get to wildly speculate with some of the audience before the film starts. Is it gonna be the new Wakanda forever? Is it gonna be Avatar? As one person foolishly thought. There's no 3D glasses, bro. They're not gonna put us up for failure. Or is it the new Steven Spielberg movie that they're for some reason releasing the same day as Black Panther 2? No, it wasn't any of those. Look out, Disney. Apple and Ryan Reynolds production company Maximum Effort are gunning for your brand. Because Spirited is a fun, whimsical family musical. That's kind of not really for families. It's PG-13, it features a lot of inappropriate humor, some crass jokes, some swearing, and it's just all around kind of a miserable, long experience. Yeah, the cat's out of the bag. This movie sucks. At a brisk 16 hours, this film just flies by. I think it's two, maybe even a little over, maybe a little under. It's hard to know. When you're so miserable watching something, every second feels like an eternity. Now, I mentioned this was a mystery movie. If you're a Regal card member paying that 23 bucks a month to see unlimited films, this didn't cost anything extra, which is probably why it wasn't too much of a problem for people to leave halfway through. I've never witnessed something like this before in my life. I kid you not, three separate groups of people got up and left as this film was going. Including the person I went with. My buddy DJ Bless, 35 minutes in, turned to me and said, would you be mad if I left? And I said, no, I'm actually mad you're still here. The only reason I sat through this trek is so I could give you the scoop. But truth be told, you didn't need more than 30 minutes to decide what this film was. I could have easily left. I should have. I should have left. I developed a new term to talk about movies like this. I call it a green screen movie. Because 80% of this is clearly shot in front of a green screen on a sound stage. So what's even the plot of this movie, you might be wondering. Well, it's a Christmas Carol. You know that old Charles Dickens chestnut? It's back, baby, and it's worse than ever. It's not like we don't have better options. We got the Muppet Christmas Carol. We got the Mickey Christmas Carol. We have the delightfully wicked Scrooge with Bill Murray. We have that creepy dead-eyed Jim Carrey animated one. There's so many better offerings. What sets spirited apart from the other Christmas Carols is it's set in modern times. So there's online bullying. Social media plays a big factor because we're not sick of this stuff yet. And Ryan Reynolds, believe it or not, plays kind of a sarcastic douchebag. I know, I know, it's wild, it's out there. And he's the main target for our spirits to go after. There's a whole organization set up to pick out individuals to save. We start with a Karen and we build our way up to this Ryan Reynolds business type who can really change people for the best if they can reach him. The problem is he's an unsalvageable or whatever the term is they use, it doesn't matter. Basically, he can't be saved. They, they've done the homework, they've done the math, there's no good in this guy that can come out, but Will Ferrell believes in him. So the movie is very paint by numbers for a while. Ryan Reynolds' character Clint is gonna be visited by present, who is Will Ferrell, past and future. He's gonna learn some lessons along the way. He's gonna sing some miserable songs and I'm gonna die a little bit more inside. It's appropriate that this movie's called Spirited because I felt like my soul was trying to spirit away during the course of this film. This is a musical. There's like seven or eight songs in here. Some of them are halvesies, not full numbers. Some of them go on way too long. All of them are a miserable experience. And some of the songs are catchy. Uh, some of the dance choreography is wonderful. It's, it's whimsical, it's, it's got a lot going for it. The problem is we have main characters who can't really sing. Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds are putting the work in. They're not bad singers, but they're certainly not anything that's gonna set the world ablaze. He's really trying to achieve Hugh Jackman's skill set here in the singing department, and he's falling up very short. Hell, there's even a reference to the greatest showman in this, and that's probably the best part of the film. And I guess I was a little disingenuous earlier when I said I didn't leave early. I did leave early. There was one final song when the credits started to roll, and I just couldn't do it anymore. I, I had to go. I had to leave. Around the hour and 10 mark, I had to go to the bathroom. I had to take a piss. So I got up and it was kind of like a choose your own adventure in the bathroom. Almost all the toilets were broken down, out of order. Theaters are in a good place right now. And out of the three urinals available, only one was actually active. The other two had duct tape and rope on them. They couldn't be used. They, they were completely shut down. 
So I had to go with the kids option, which is about knee high. As I'm having a powerful pee, there is little bits of urine spackling my knees, the bottom of my legs, it's disgusting. But at this point, I'm already committed. I'm not gonna stop full stream and I'm hold it for the rest of the film and I'm certainly not gonna go into one of the stalls. I could only imagine the nightmare scenario that's taking place inside. So I finished up. I'm then at the sink, splashing water on my knees. There's no paper towels, it's air dry only, so I'm just kind of like a shaggy dog doing this. And then I go back into the movie, miserable, legs wet, flop down in my chair with my soaking wet legs, looking up at this awful film, miserable. Contemplating every single life choice that brought me to this point. A middle-aged man, going to a mystery movie. It's seven o'clock on a Monday night. My buddy left. I'm, I'm here for the, the review, which like to what, to what point, you know? What, what's the end game here? It was at about this point when Octavia Spencer busted out a number, a solo act in front of a green screen. She's supposed to be in an office, but nothing feels real except for the desk that's in front of her. Everything else is just so fake, so artificial. It, it, it's just, there's nothing to cling to here. I'm just watching these actors desperately shit this film out so they can get their paycheck and move on to the next garbage streaming service movie. It's depressing where we're at. Also, Octavia Spencer, what the hell are you doing? Get a different agent. You keep doing these garbage movies now. Ma? Ma was horrible. What were you thinking, Octavia Spencer? And what happened to Will Ferrell? He used to be like the funniest guy on the planet. I think the last time he was in something funny was Elf. Am I losing my mind? Was it that long ago where Will Ferrell did something hilarious? <sighs> to Octavia's credit, I don't think she's ever in a scene with anyone real. I think most of her stuff was shot in a green screen in, in like her flat somewhere in, you know, wherever she lives, New York or LA, I, I don't know. I imagine her life's a lot more exciting than mine regardless. But there is a scene where she and Will Ferrell are having a nice brisk walk down the street, city nights in the background, people uh, bustle, roller skating, listening to music, sitting on their stupid phones, and they're just doing this for five full minutes. This is how people walk when you're in front of a green screen on a sound stage and there is nothing real around you. You're probably not even next to the person. This goes on and on. They have a song. There's only like three camera angles. This is a song in the movie. There's stuff all around me. La 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 la. Kill me now. Put a gun to my head. Make me dead. Look at this shit. I can do this. Look, I'm doing it right now. I'm in the city. Now I'm on the beach. Now I'm in a movie with these guys. <laughs> if you're thinking about getting Apple Plus for this movie, I would think again. I would think twice. I was gonna wait in the lobby for the guy that thought this might be Avatar and um, and just see how he's holding up, you know? See if he made it through. But once the 200th song came on and the movie still hadn't ended and they kept making more twists and turns and I didn't care and thought maybe I was gonna die in that movie theater, I had to go. I honestly don't know if the movie ever ended. It might still be going now. I'd like to think he made it home okay though. That he held his wife tightly and they Maybe we'll think twice about going to another mystery movie in the future. I know I will. I know I will. So that's Spirited. I hated it. Let me know in the comments if you're looking forward to this film or if you're gonna get Apple Plus to, to check it out when it launches. Like the video if you had some fun. Subscribe to the channel for more movie reviews. I post them all the time, every week. Would love to have you stick around. And until then, you have yourself a good afternoon. That's one of the jokes in the movie that lands and they know it and drive it into the ground by saying it a thousand times. It's, it, it's not worth watching or explaining. Take care. Hey, thanks again for watching the video. If you want, you can check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies and become a member there. I'm also on YouTube, join. I'm also on Discord at adamdoesmovies. You can find me on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitch. Filming some of this stuff live and getting input as I go. So you can find me all over the place. Would love to see you at some of these locations. Take care.